I don't think you get celebrated enough. You should be celebrated for every aspect of your growth and your growing pain. Hello, beautiful people. This is Yeye Bex Lizzie, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hi. Yeye Bex means your girl in this Bob and colloquial language. So it is your girl. I ask Nozzy, but you guys can call me Nozzy. Why am I losing my voice? Oh my god. <coughs> <coughs> okay. <laughs> Why am I losing my voice? Okay, so it is 2 a.m. I am shooting this video. I am badge contenting. So if you guys see the same hoodie, just know I'm lazy to change it. And it's my hoodie, so. There's nothing you can do about it, okay? There's nothing you can do about it. All right. In any case, all right, if you're familiar with this picture in the background, you guys obviously know who I'm talking about. And again, oh, I forgot to say this. Fashion forward, okay? Let's go back. Let's rewind, let's rewind, let's rewind, okay? So. Let me talk about Fashion Forward for a little while, okay? So Fashion Forward is a little series that I have a little series. I wouldn't say a little series. But anyways, it's a series I have on my channel where we speak about the people in the fashion industry who are making big changes or who have played a huge part in the fashion industry. And even if they don't look like they're playing a huge part in the fashion industry, they're still doing amazing work. So we speak about them here. We learn from them. We just learn. Like, that's literally what it is all about. We empower, we get tips from them, and we're just listening to their story, well, reading their story, if I'm reading and looking down, <laughs> and stuff, through the research that I've done, and etc. So, yeah, that's what Fashion Forward is all about. So, if you're interested in fashion, business, branding, and etc., please just subscribe, okay? And please also follow me on all my social media channels. I am IXNOZY, the same name that you see on this channel, you will find it on all social media channels except for like reddit or something like that i'm not there okay well i'm there but i don't think i'm my ex nosy anyways let's dive in and who I am is all about trying to fight to blur the lines between what men and women and non-binary individuals can wear. I bl believe and look at clothing being a vessel that transports the wearer and the people that see them to another space, another... So this is what is written in the about page of harrisreed.com. Fighting for the beauty of fluidity, half American, half British, Harris Reed designs to create conversation. Growing up with a strong sense of self, Reed was able to quickly understand the transformative power of clothing and its correlation with identity and liberation. So I don't know if you guys remember this picture, this amazing, amazing picture, but to others, they would say it's odd. But to me, I'd say, wow, I love it, okay? <laughs> I truly do. In any case, this um, outfit was designed by Harris Reed. I don't even know if this outfit is a suit or a dress. It's just, it's just amazing. I don't know, like it's just like, what? I don't know what it is but it's nice it's cool it's some naughty i lock it okay i lock i lock i like it <laughs> i use the rock afrikaans but anyways yeah i really like it harris reed is gender fluid and he uses the his and him pronouns he was asked by vogue editorial director anna winter i hope i, I hope i said that correctly i'll just put her name on the screen to create a look that would feature in the december issue so as always kind of i'm gonna read from my script just a little bit so if you see me looking down please okay just bear with me all right he just graduated from central saint martin's fashion's most prestigious graduate school and has worked with solange harry styles of course and ezra miller just to name a few all right harris reed doesn't just create clothes or make clothes that just 
seem creative. He creates clothes that have a social and political statement and I'm sure we can all see that especially with that December beautiful December issue like it just catches your attention and you say what's that oh oh you're testing the boundaries Harris Reed was born in Los Angeles and him and his family would move around the USA and Europe. His father is a, documentar a documentary filmmaker <laughs> and his mother is a perfume, a perfume, a perfume, what? A perfume, oh, she's a perfumer and also a former model. He realized he was into fashion at the age of 10 years old and they were living in Arizona at that time i hope i said the place correctly i'm not american so i'm so sorry for that okay he was bullied for being gay at a young age and i don't think that should have happened at all bullying is just not right it's not good it sh just shouldn't be happening you know like gay or not bullying is just not right like it's just it's just it's just disgusting to be honest so he made up fictional characters while he was growing up and these characters were basically a representative or they were basically characters that he would inspire to be like or inspire to be they were fantasies of the type of person he wanted to be basically nobody would actually pull nobody would actually pull push did i say pull <laughs> anyways nobody would actually push the boundaries um, of fashion in arizona so he would just do it he would make all these clothes design all these clothes and it would make people uncomfortable but he liked it he liked pushing the boundaries and we see it in his like i mean we can obviously see it in his fashion guys like he pushes the boundaries he definitely does so when he was in arizona nobody was doing it but he said i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it watch me i'm just gonna read a piece from his interview on tatla of uh, and from his interview in tatla okay so he says my teens were crazy i interned with kelly katron i hope i said that name properly who owns one of the biggest u.s fashion pr companies after i met her at a book signing when i was 13 and said i wanted to work for her for her I slept on her sofa for three fashion weeks in a row. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, at 14, I was front of house for Jeremy Scott running clothes for Nicki Minaj and other stars. And I interned for other designers in New York and LA. So at such a young age, you already had this ambition. Anyways, it continues to say, then three and a half years ago, I came to London to study at Central St. Martins. It wasn't until I arrived in London that I realized that this was a city in which I could fully be myself. I love how you can walk through bank and see a guy in a business suit walking next to a guy in a pink wedding dress and mohawk and people barely bat an eyelid. It's a social cultural fashion hub and it's and it's where I started making things for my and it's where I started making things for myself. I really want to visit London. It sounds I don't know, it really sounds like a place to just be at. I don't know. Anyways, it all started with a fashion show from his BA course and because he was inspired by all the fictional characters, he has created, um, he decided to create this hat. By the way, I'm reading from my script now. Like, So let's reverse, let's rewind, okay? So this whole, it all started with a fashion show from his B BA course and because he was inspired by all the fictional characters he has created, he decided to create this hat hat i don't know what happened with my laptop there uh, i hope nothing funny came out but anyways um within a few minutes of posting it on instagram he got a request from harry lambert to use it for his shoot solange was wearing the hat and it had been photographed by peter Lindbergh. so this all started with uh i think a, a fashion show for his mba course that was inspired by his fictional characters again from his childhood right that he had created and he decided to create this hat this same hat that harry lambert decided to, you know lambert saw and said yo okay he posted this hat on instagram harry lambert um, decides to send a request to him and says yo i want to use this hat solange was wearing the hat and it was photographed by peter Lindbergh. a dream a movie what ah! i like it he then started making clothes for harry styles uh, on tour through Harry Lambert. 
because of a photo he posted on instagram but then again he's worked so hard i mean by the age of 13 he was already doing a whole lot of things in the fashion industry you know Harry Reid has a letter he wrote himself when he was nine years old. It's really sweet. It's really just emotional and all of those sweet stuff like, oh, you know. So if you guys want to read the letter, I have it linked down below. It's in a Vogue article so you guys can read it, okay? He plans to make sure that his voice is truly heard and that everyone feels free to fully express themselves express themselves i'm so sorry if i'm losing my voice gosh i don't know what's going on today he is also showcasing an alternative to masculinity and i mean it's pretty evident <laughs> we can see that right and it's pretty cool he believes that we need to start having more conversations about gender and race and i truly 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 stand for that as well i think it's such an important conversation that we should be having as society and also respect one another's opinions without getting like upset like too upset to the point where we fight or something like that no let's have real conversations and let's be open to listen to one another Harris, you've dressed the stars, but to me, you are the star. <laughs> and it's an honor to be in conversation with you about this topic that I hold so dear. So let's just begin with the basics. How is fashion upholding the binary, and why is that a problem? Ooh, such a good question. Um, I think from my interpretation as a like, gender-fluid fashion designer, I think society relies on what it thinks that it knows is right and what it thinks that it's going to make money from. So I think it sticks with the structure that you know men's clothes needs to look like this, women's clothes needs to look like this, because we can profit from this, because we've seen that from the margins in the past, from the sales in the past, um, and it just kind of keeps perpetuating this idea that you know there's this crazy binary and there's no kind of risk there because people I think are too scared to kind of jump that even though when you see you know, people like me and other people that there's a huge kind of opportunity to make money um, and grow a business. Right, they're taking arbitrary objects, colors, scents, textiles and giving them genders. It's so funny to me how they accuse us of making everything about gender whenever they take a literal skirt and say it's different than a pair of shorts because of one piece of fabric, right? Mm -hmm. And as a designer, I'm curious, do you think it makes sense to be gendering fashion even from a technical perspective? No. I think the thing that's so funny for me and that, you know, I think that we've talked about before is, you know, I've seen even when it was like the Harry Styles days doing that world tour, like I saw after I started doing these pussy bow blouses, it was my interpretation of fluidity at that moment in time, how it kept getting knocked off. But instead of knocking off the world that I was creating and what I was trying to do within my own work, it was just putting, you know, someone in a blouse. It wasn't like the full image within that. So it's, it's quite interesting and it's something we need to like, I don't know, like grow upon. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's so weird to me because it seems so obvious, right? Mm. We can say literally anybody, any person can wear makeup, jewelry, earrings, a skirt, a dress, so therefore these things don't have genders. And when I tell people that, they obviously agree. Like, mm. yeah, I could be wearing a skirt right now. But then so many brands tell me, well, even though I agree with you, and then there's a the disconnect, yeah. and they won't degender their product lines. And what I'm curious is, how could you believe that, mm. understand that this is a fact, and yet still continue to be committed to making men's garments and women's garments? Why do you think there's that disconnect? I think because what I've realized from someone who, when I'm working with retailers, the problem that a lot of people have is that the system that's in place for the online retail, so there's the men's section, the women's section, they don't have anything already implemented to cross over product. So every meeting I sit with that's amazing, it's like, oh, we love it, it's gender fluid, it's amazing, you're dressing the biggest people in the world. Oh, come talk to someone junior and I sit in a design meeting and they're like, oh, we don't know how to do this fluid thing. We don't really know how to make this work. And it's really interesting because then they tell me the technical side of it is this, oh, the software just can't go between is quite archaic, but I'm like, how is your software archaic and you want to believe in the future and a vision, but you can't implement a structure that allows the product to be seen across both gender profiles? So it's really funny because I'm also thinking the millions of dollars that go out and spending a year as someone who's worked with Gucci, worked with Etcher, worked with Matt Cosmetics, Miss Emma, in my two years of my design career. And I can see that, you know, they have multi million dollar marketing budgets, but it probably would only take a couple hundred grand to redo the structure of a website to then allow this cross pollination. And also, when you talk to people, and as someone who saves up all my money to buy fabulous things, you know, when Balenciaga releases a men's platform shoe, it sells out instantly. And then I go to the store and they're like, oh, well, we're not going to make them again. It was a small little run. 
but then all the sneakers are there and no one's buying those sneakers. So, I mean, obviously no sneaker sales are huge, but in these instances. So it's quite interesting because it's like they need to go back into the company and it's great you keep hiring big figureheads to kind of spear this new image and make cute Instagram videos and content, but it's actually about going into the people in the tech department and behind the scenes and actually restructuring that. Because if you can restructure that, how much you would make so much more money. Because also women's, women's clothing tends to be far more expensive than men's clothing. So if a male customer can be, or you know, non-binary customer can be putting things in their basket from the Blinciago women's wear runway as well as they're doing like a Jill Sander men's wear piece and a Harris Reed non-binary piece and they're putting it into their cart, the sales would be so much greater than having to swap between and I hate that. And I just think it's like such a no-brainer. Isn't it absurd that they can speak about the metaverse and like virtual reality before removing a binary option on their websites, yeah. right? It's a question for me, not about feasibility, but about priority. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think really frustrates me. What we can learn here is that we need to really push uncomfortable conversations as a society. Like, what is wrong with a man wearing a blouse? Like, it's just a blouse. It's a shirt. Like, it's just a blouse. Is it, is it because it's not manly enough? Like, what is being manly even, you know? Um, we make these things up. We make these, like, I guess these expectations up. How a man is supposed to express themselves. Like, who made that up? Who, who made that up? Tell me who made that up, okay? Fashion is about fully expressing yourself and doing, and fully expressing yourself through clothes. And we should feel free to do that no matter what. Like, okay, so that was weird, um, but we're back. I'm recording. Um, the next day i hope that english made sense but anyways yeah the electricity just did what it did last night so i'm shooting again today just to continue the video and everything so here we are so as i was saying like fashion is a way we like we need to feel free to express ourselves the way we want to express ourselves, the way we want to express ourselves through fashion right i remember this guy okay this guy used to go to home south when, uh, when i was in my university achieving my fine my first finance degree right so he would say so he would come to home style or church with makeup on child the rings on child and he just had this feminine vibe about him like he would walk like this but he still loved jesus like it was so weird for me because i come from a very conservative church right my family's church is pretty conservative so when i saw this guy coming in in home style with makeup he like it was it was nice like like, I would just be like, yeah, you do your thing. And it really just showed me how he could, like, I just loved how he just fully and truly expressed himself. Although he was, like, in an environment that, you know, kind of just judges you <laughs> all the time for what you do most of the time. And it shouldn't, like, church shouldn't be an environment like that. But that's the discussion for another day. I don't want to get into that. In any case, like, I love the fact that he truly expressed himself and he loves Jesus. Like, you can, you can... You can, I don't know how to say this, but nothing will stop you from loving Jesus, even people, okay? Period. So I'm going to read this from my script because I just don't want to mess this up. And this is from my heart, okay? I believe this, okay? Honestly, everyone's journey is different, okay? Everyone is on a different path. I know it's pretty cliche to say that, but everyone's on a, like, everyone's journey is really different, right? And this thing called life like there's no manual for it there is a framework there are principles and etc but there's not really like oh okay you should do this because this is your name you should do this because this is how you are blah blah blah, blah. like there's nothing like that right everyone has different standards and preferences i being a believer of christ will say nobody has the right to bully anyone for expressing themselves we are taught to love by christ okay so love one another and listen to each other's stories even if it doesn't make sense to you even if it doesn't make sense to you it's their journey it's not yours okay all you can do is think highly of people and never think you are higher than anyone else because of how they 
choose to express themselves. Okay? This is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I definitely did. Harris Reed is amazing. He's cool. I'm so sorry, like my mic is blocking the the, the, the picture here but this is harris reed's website there but yeah i'm gonna fix it for the next video if i can in any case i hope you guys enjoyed this video please click the like button subscribe and share this with anybody else who you think will be inspired and motivated or empowered by this all right don't forget to follow me on all my social media channels okay 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 <laughs> ix nosy all right i'll see you in my next video bye guys